decade, extreme sports and the athletes who engage in them have become much more popular. The people who film their superhuman feats are also worth watching, as Jeff Glor found out. Jeff, good morning. Charlie, good morning to you. The company is called Sender Films, a couple guys who turned their passion for climbing and adventure into a business. By now, a successful one. If you're not standing on top of the world, this is the next best thing. The footage can be hard to watch. It's even harder to turn away. Human beings doing things at extreme altitudes that have never been done before. Crazy stuff. Climbing mountains without ropes. Death-defying freefalls in wing suits. Just as impressive, the photographers who take risks right along with them. In some ways, our job is easy. If we can do it safely and get into position, all we have to do is hold the camera, turn it on, and there's magic unfolding. Pete Mortimer runs Sender Films out of this modest carriage house in Boulder, Colorado. But his real office is here. Places others can't or won't go. Sender's Films documenting free solo climber Alex Honnold. And slackliner Sketchy Andy brought those two international fame. Honnold was profiled on 60 Minutes. Andy performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. In Colorado's famed El Dorado Canyon, Mortimer was more than happy to show us how he creates these films. You want me to dangle from where? I want to get you to the very top of the Bastille and get you dangling off the cliff so uh, you get to see the world from our perspective. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done. First, we had to climb up there. How's that going, Jeff? These are definitely not climbing shoes. Obviously, we're here to do a shoot, but in front of that is at all times safety. High above the canyon floor, with wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour, it was time to descend nearly 100 feet. Welcome to our office. <laughs> I've never done an interview off the side of a mountain before. All right, yeah. What are the biggest challenges you face? The climbs that these guys are doing now, the cutting edge of climbing, has gotten so far out there. And so for us to get into position, um, it's a bigger challenge. And then visually, we want to shoot things in, the new, in a new way. We never want a climb to look like something we did last year or the year before. Mortimer does all this by working with the smallest and lightest equipment available. Multiple cameras are a must. For our shoot, he had four cameras rolling. Does that look okay? All of his shooters are experienced climbers. And the climbing pros, like Matt Siegel, are the best in the world. What is it like working with these guys? Uh, it's super fun. You know, I've gone out and shot with these guys all over the world. Is it more difficult to focus when a camera's in your face? Not really. There's a trust factor. When you're having somebody above you, you definitely want to know that they're not going to drop anything on you, that they're safe. Mortimer and the rest of the crew were working flawlessly until something went wrong. Track. It happened in an instant. Slow down, you can see the rock fall. Mortimer's safety line almost slipped off the rock face. That means he would have fallen too. I'm going to just lower myself off this edge. There was a close call. Yeah. This afternoon. Yeah. I've probably been on the Bastille formation a thousand times in my life. Definitely, like, just an instantaneous reminder that, like, even on a fun day out there with friends and a film crew, like, it is dangerous what we do. Accidents are something Mortimer's partner, Nick Rosen, knows all about. You broke your neck and your back. I did. Here I am, the jerk with the neck brace on. Rosen's broken back and neck happened in a climbing accident only three weeks before we arrived. And those risks weigh even more heavily on Mortimer now. He's married with a two-year-old daughter and another child on the way. I think I'm probably just that much more cautious when I'm up there. Do you worry about the danger? Um, I think Pete's been doing this since before I met him, since before we got together. I think if I were to worry, I'd be worrying all the time, so I sort of turn off that part of my brain. But if danger is part of the equation, so too is the passion to capture the perfect image. We think when people go out there and, you know, push their limits and really, like, redefine the possibilities of what humans can do, that that's inspirational. Wow, I could shoot that all day. So the question is, uh, what was the most exciting thing about this experience? 
I mean, you're certainly dangling off the cliff there was exciting. But at least you're on a rope there. I thought the more tenuous part was just climbing up the actual mountain, getting up there. I, I, was, I was really amazed at, you know, I heard someone say these guys just have a different relationship with fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they do. I mean, they're bounding around on cliffs here or on platforms that are exposed. One wrong step and you're gone. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it like they're walking across the living room. But is it because of skill and experience that they have a different relationship or because they have a mindset that's part of their DNA? And that's a great question. I asked that exact question to them. And they said some people learn just to tamp that fear down with repetition and some people are just born without it. The photography is incredible. What do they do? Movies and all kinds of stuff? Movies, films, DVDs. They have this, uh, they have this film festival now, which is in 400 spots around the world, <laughs> wow. and which is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. So people want to see it. Oh, yeah. Extreme. Including me. Yeah, extreme There you go. What do you, will we see you off the side no, of the No, no, but you'll see me looking at the film, though. I, mean, I, I, would, I asked him. I would do it. But All right. It's very exciting stuff. We'll take yeah. you. Jeff Glor, thank, thank you. you.